Remember how I said this in my last update and review? And since 1.6 would probably be another filler update similar to what 1.4 was, I'm very looking forward to what Inazuma has in store for us. Yeah, I sort of take that back. Aside from the only major canon story related quest that is the Inazuma prologue, this version was what I like to call... A Primogen Farm! farm. <laughs> Why do I do that? So yeah, what is going on guys, it's Sage here and welcome to an update and review of version Likewise, I'm going to split the video into three different sections with events, characters, and features. So let's jump into it. 1.6 introduces a certain amount of new features and quality of life changes. While there aren't that many, here are a few of them that really stood out to me. First one is of course costumes. We got Barbaras and Jeans in this update, with Barbara being free and Jeans costing 1,680 Genesis Crystals. Since both of their costumes are summer related, I would have loved to see an alternate costume for Diluc or Kea or even Albedo, but I guess that'll have to wait. I'm very looking forward to the Traveler's costume though, maybe an Inazuma themed one would be pretty cool, seeing as we're going there next. A brand new feature has been added to the Serenity pod, which lets us invite our characters into the pod. With this feature, you'll be able to talk to them, farm up friendship levels, and most importantly, get gifts from them. This is one of the few features added in 1.6 that made this pretty much a primogen form update. You get gifts by placing sets that specific characters like. Each character has up to two sets, indoors and outdoors. With each set, a character can give you up to 40 primos, which is not bad at all. Finally! It took them this long. This long! Now I'm playing. Thank you, Mihoi, for finally fixing and adding this. Right, this one's not that big of a change, but definitely helps with prolonging co-op sessions if, say, you're out of condensed resins and you want to make more, now you don't have to go back to your world and just make it in your friend's world or vice versa. Thanks, Mihoyo. We only got one new character in this update, but hey, a good introduction and bridge to the next chapter of the story nonetheless. Kazuha, who for some reason has his full name displayed, is an animal sword character from Inazuma. His skill lets you gather enemies while also launching you upwards, allowing you to plunge attack. His ultimate deals AoE animal damage, which can absorb other elements and deal whatever elemental damage it absorbs periodically. He was introduced as Beidou's friend and also a temporary addition to their crew. In the Inazuma prologue where he was introduced, we got a bit of his backstory regarding why he's here in Liyue with Beidou, and also a small history of what happened in Inazuma. From the looks of it, we're going to some deep stuff when we get to Inazuma. I'm all up for it though. Seeing Honkai made me cry for its story, it's time Genshin does that too. Why not start with the most annoying one out of all of them and work our way up to the better ones? Vagabond Sword, the successor, the inheritor, the reincarnation of the mighty Hypostasis Symphony from 1.2 is back with three of the most annoying bosses in the game, compiled into one challenge. Need I say more? Well, I guess I do. Since this time, they made it so that even if you challenge the same boss over and over again, you'd still gain points as long as the person you're trying to help is the one who deals the final blow. So yeah, I guess it wasn't that bad. Yeah, okay, maybe it was. Never ending battle? <laughs> More like never ending depression. <clears throat> sadness. Sa sadness, not depression. Anyway. 
This one's pretty much a normal time challenge, but the twist is that you have to use the Harp Aston gadget to hit the targets for buffs that are provided in that specific challenge. The more targets you hit, the higher the meter will go, giving you stronger buffs. To be honest, I'm just glad that they put the Primal Gem reward on the lowest score of 500, since getting 1k is already hard enough, especially if your characters are still under level 70. But hey, not a bad challenge nonetheless. Although, this challenge is solo only, so... Ooh, this one was definitely one of my favorite, aside from the main event. Kaboom Ball Combat, a pretty simple minigame where you need to hit the harp customs back to the Dota Fortress who's shooting them at you. There's really not much more to it than that, but it was definitely a lot of fun. Except for the lobs. I can't hit perfect returns on the lobs. Alright, saving the best for last, the main event of this version update, the Midsummer Islands. The event follows Klee and almost every major Mondstadt character receiving a letter from the Dodo King that ultimately gathers all of them to the Golden Apple Archipelago, or as Venti calls it, the Har Islands. The party then searches for hints as to who exactly this Dodo King is. At the end of the search, we found that it was just Klee's mother Alice all along that came up with everything. Side note, after completing the main quest for the event, you can talk to Dilok in this spot right here, and what he said was truly intriguing, to say the least. In short, this was up there with Lantern Rite, and if you guys have seen any of my videos, especially my review on version 1.3, I rate the Lantern Rite as the best event up to 1.6 so far. And I can say this with confidence, Midsummer Islands is second in line of being the best event so far in Genshin. With its rich environment, music, heck even lore believe it or not, this event just shows how MiHoYo is more than capable of making immersive stories and events. But hold up, Sage, did you say lore? Why yes, stranger watching this video, I did! With this event comes another event, the Echoing Tales, which rewards you with Barbara Summer Clothing for collecting 24 out of 32 total Echoing Conscious. These things hold interesting stories about the history of the islands and even hint about Inazuma. The Conscious tells stories of people who were stuck and lived in these islands many years ago. One hinted that they got stranded here while sailing from Inazuma and crashed their ship. Another tells the story of people from outside of the islands trying to convince the ones here about the outside world of Mondstadt, Liyue, and Inazuma. Not gonna lie, I think this was one of the best lore type events, even though it's not fully 100% canon, that has ever been introduced into the game. And speaking of Inazuma, a new boss was added to the game, which is Mago Kenki a sort of mechanical samurai that deals animo and cryo damage. His attacks seem normal on paper, but not sure why, he feels like an absolute damage sponge. But hey, maybe that's just me not having characters that can one-shot bosses. Or do I? Oh my god! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Weird flex, I'm sorry. So there you have it. While all of this was pretty much a filler event, the content felt like it belongs in the game, similar to what they did with Lantern Rite. What did you guys think of the event? Was it enjoyable? Did you get all the achievements and chests for that sweet, sweet Primal Gem? Let me know down in the comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. It's been Sage, and I will see you guys in Inazuma. Oh, wait, wrong character. Who are you today?